this little jig, don't stick the jig all the way in the body there, otherwise you've got two sets of eyes next to each other and it looks straight. Yeah? So what you typically want to do is this little jig here, um, hook them through the head and use the elastic to make them readless. Or have you got circle looks in that? Small circles. This type of circle works best because it's got that tail style. This is an owner. Most circulars have just got a round bed there, so the bait goes and sits, and then it doesn't become weedless. With this kind of circular look, if you pull like this, then, see, let's say if I leave the bait there, if I pull him once or twice, that's where he goes and sits. So basically what happens is this point is behind the eye. So when you retrieve this, it doesn't catch grass so much, but also when you fish it, it's like this, the hooks have to be in the corner of the mouth. Just use a little worm weight. So easy to fish like this. The worm weights I've got inside, and this particular circle, I've been like two bucks a pack. Okay, so rigging that bait now, I want to show you if you if you rig this style of bait, Texas rig style. In other words, you use like a worm style hook. You just get one style hook. So basically. What you do is, is you hook the bait through the head. It's got a little weight there which makes it swim correctly. And then most times you will take the hook and you will put it through the lure body. But with an unfair lures rigging style, you don't do that. Unfair lures is about doing something different for you. So where the wire goes through the bait, you take a little needle nose scissors and you see where the, the bait goes through cut a slot, see there's a little slot right through the bait, you cut a hole through the bait. Now instead of rigging the bait with your hook point, you rig the bait with a bend of the hook. It sounds quite strange but you take the bend and you push it through and what you basically then do is you hold the weight with your finger and you give the bait one pull and it's dead straight on your hook shank which means it's going to swim right. Now, when the fish bites, the material collapses so you can get a hook set too. If you don't cut the little scissors all through, it's hard to get a hook set with this material. And super stretchy, super durable, swims like a live fish. And there you go. So that's how you would rig those plastics. Just cut a little slot right through. And you push the bend through. Yeah, practice quickly. Push the bend through. See, there's a little hole. Are you pushing it through the side? Push it. Yeah, I do that Hold the bait correctly. Yeah, okay, yeah. this is how you should hold it. Hold your bait with two fingers like that. Then you take the bend and you just control push it through. Super easy to do. For people that have... No, ah, look at that. You're a winner, man. There you go. Now what you do is uh, just to hold the weight your one hand and pull the tail and he's dead straight on the hook chain ready to go catch fish nice. and and that's how he swims so when you pop him with a rod tip he's gonna swim like a living fish right. it's more convincing you know like on a tough day or maybe you're fishing in a place where the fish get wet where the fish have a lot of pressure if you rig something really smart and it's very convincing it just adds that mistake factor fish makes a mistake, you got it. So on that one you have to... Right? So, so now that has got a weight oh, molded to the hook. Yeah, right. So the worm weight... The worm weight, so this is like a Carolina rig style and I found this to be the most effective. So basically what I do is I would take a, a, take a bait which is, you take your unfailure's bait and then there's a little mold seam on the bottom of the bait, you know, from the mold. So I will take it and I'll put the hook in the mold seam. And I'll bring him up through the head right on the other mold seam. Then what you do to get him to sit right on the hook, you just pull him a few times and he goes and he sits perfectly in the bend of the hook. Okay. So basically now, you cast it out there. Your weight goes and settles on the bottom, but this material floats. As you can see in the tank, yeah. the material floats. 
So with your with your little uh, uh, weight on the bottom, the material then goes and floats a little bit up, which means he's not right in the grass. So a fish swimming here, you can see that bait right there. You can feel him in the lateral line, and he just when he rushes him to grab him. This is a, 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 a interesting bit of information for you folks. When a fish grabs a bait fish, it'll grab it, but always try and grab it over the eye. Because if you can grab him on the eye, he stops the forward movement. And then quickly you'll like just shake him a little bit and swallow him head first. The reason for swallowing head first is so that the spines fold down and go straight down the throat. Try and swallow him the other way, sometimes it's a little difficult. So there you go. That is a, a super easy way of rigging the unfair lure soft bait. Okay, this particular bait, well, let me just show you one. Uh, this particular one, I fished with Captain Daniel Land on Tuesday, has between, I think, I'd say between 12 and about 16 trout on it already. And the eyes are still on. It's, it's, it's a little tore up, but you know, it's still catching fish. Yeah. This soft bait. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. I fished Grand Isle, Louisiana. Looking here at about probably 20 to 24 fish. Yeah, I like to do On the same bait with a little slip weight over here. Weight goes down, the bait floats right in front of the fish, it just grabs it, swims away. When that circle looks stings him, he really takes off. So you tap tap your rod, you fish him like this. When the strike takes place, you feel the little tap like a bite and then you hold you don't do anything you can maybe just reel him a little bit give him a little bit of action tap tap again and then the rod just drops and you start reeling it's super easy to fish if the unfair lures baits get a bad memory in them you see this one has been laying on the console of my truck so it got a bit bent etc you take this bait and you put it in the pot of boiling water it doesn't have to be boiling boiling as long as it's simmering the bait floats, it'll straighten itself up. So what you do is after about two or three minutes, you lift the bait out with a fork and you put him in cold water, hold him straight and he's fixed, you can go fish again. So that's just a nice way. Sometimes, for example sakes, you'll leave your baits in your bag or something and, the, and the, maybe, you know, the bag rolled in your truck or something, now bait is bent like this and you only notice it two weeks later when you go fish again. Your bait's got that memory in it. Put him in some hot water, floats himself straight, fix your bait up. Okay. So I wanted to share something with you guys um, in lieu of doing the seminar. And that is that my subject was going to be how do fish feed and how do catch fish on lures more effectively. Okay, so we are adults, when we go eat food, our senses approve the food before we actually put it in the mouth. So the pizza should be round, it should have be cut in wagon wheels, it should have some stuff on it, it should have the right smell. You don't take a piece of pizza and send it to the laboratory first before they analyze it before you take a bite. The same with um, nice tamales or, you know, uh, 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 whatever the case may be. So, you know your food by looking at it. But you know redfish and trout and all the fish in the water, for most of the year they can't see because there's no light, it's dark. And then for the rest of the year, sometimes the water is so churned up from tide and rain and wind that the water has only got visibility like this. So that fish can't feed with his eyesight. He's feeding by triangulating food with his lateral light. You can see the lateral line very clearly over here. You see each of those little bumps. Each bump on that lateral line is one part of a GPS satellite. He triangulates. Now remember something, he triangulates what he knows. So a shrimp in the water, like the unfair lure shrimp, makes exactly the same pulse or sonic signature in the water than a live shrimp. Exactly the same. The unfair lure's mullet is exactly like a live shrimp. I mean a live mullet. Let me just show you a live mullet out of a... Uh, so 
here I have a large mullet. This is the one I like to use. It's a five inch mullet. This is what I like to use for big trout, big redfish, snook, tarpon, etc. Because this now starts becoming a viable meal. Would you like a pizza cut in sixteenths or, or eighths or quarters? Quarters, man, you fold those tabs together and you, there they go. So, so there's your unfairless mullet. Now when this mullet moves through the water, it gives a certain particular sonic pulse. And in dirty water, a big trout or a redfish knows exactly what's moving through the water. He knows it's F-O-O-D. <laughs> That's why you do catch more fish and better quality fish with unfair lures. And secondly, your predation strikes are not reaction strikes. So a fish is not going to slap at this bait. A trout or a redfish doesn't slap at a mud. He hits that thing to kill it. And that's exactly what you're going to have here. The, the, the hooks on unfair lures are significant. They're good style hooks with an outside bar. For a 60% quicker hook set than the standard hook. And if you want to spend a half hour with me, I'll actually show you why that is. An interesting thing, um, while you guys are here, the outside bob is for a number of reasons. Quicker hook set. Secondly, if you catch a really big trout, a trout over 22 inches should never be killed. I don't care what you say. I don't care what charter captain you are and what your clients say. A trout of 22 inches is a genetically strong fish. It's a survivor. That fish should be allowed to be breeding up our stocks. A farmer never kills his stud animals. He always sends the heifers to market. If you need to kill a 116 inches or 17 inch fish, but those big fish, man, release them. And in about two or three or four years, you're gonna be catching 10 or 12, 27 inch fish a day. Isn't that what you really want? No need for a skin mount. Go to a taxidermist. All of them have got molds of big trout, man. You just make a nice mold. That is a 33-inch trout that I caught, that I released. Went to a taxidermist. He had a mold. I just had a mold made, and that's it. The outside barb hooks. So this is caught around a fish's gill rakers because of the predation strikes. So sometimes when you land a fish this mullet, you're going to just see the swivel sticking out of that trout's mouth. He plowed it to kill it. You can just lift the hook off the gill raker. It's not going to cause bleeding. Lastly, if you ever hook yourself, and many people have hooked themselves. I hooked myself on, two, on, on Tuesday by accident. Grabbed the trout and it shook its head and boom, I had a hook buried in my finger. This outside barb hook, if it's buried in your hand, you can pull the hook away from the barb. So you're going to put it in this direction and then you back them out. So it takes the pressure off the barb. It's just something that unfair lures does that's for that's our fishing. Let me try it. <laughs> Alrighty, awesome, so man. there you guys go. So basically when you want to fish more successfully, match the hatch. Don't fish a shrimp this size when the shrimp in the river are basically that. That's firstly and secondly, if you're fishing shrimp and nothing's hitting, it's like dead on shrimp. If you have a barometric app, uh, some watches have a, bar a bar uh, like a barometer on them. If your barometer has dropped and it's really low, the fish will not eat shrimp or crab. They're looking for high energy food for the rainy day, like pilchards, pogies, perch or pinfish, angelfish in the valley, or mullet or something like that. Something that's oily because a low barometer means there's bad weather coming. So they want to hunker down. You want to catch your big trout, use big baits, man. Those big trout are not successful feeders in the, in the sense that the smaller fish outperform them, they outspeed them. Those big trout are all nocturnal predators. Basically, you'll catch them in the day, but at night, that's when he wants to hunt, where he can ambush something, eat a big old meal, and go sit on the couch for a few days. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for watching my video. This is Average Joe. Um, so I wanted to show you guys just uh, some of the colors uh, that you guys saw in that video. Um, some of the colors uh, that we have here. So this one right here, this is a glow ghost. This is kind of like a little brown, a little bone color here, and of course with a with a clear belly. And we have them in two sizes. We have a chartreuse, chartreuse top, clear belly again. 
One of my favorites is the Emerald, which is a real nice little green back here. And this one is not so much of a clear, but it's a, it's a little bit of a whitish, bluish color. It looks really, really nice when it's in the water. We have the Brown Ghost. We have the Pilchard. Nuclear chicken. A lot of guys like using these for flounder. We have the salt and pepper. We got this red hot, which is red with gold flake and a clear belly. Mardi Gras. Pink Ghost. One of my favorites again. The Black Ghost, which is black on top. Got some gold flake in there, clear belly. Anchovy. And of course, there's so many other, other colors. And if you guys haven't seen these before in action, I'll take one out of the box or one in the bag, I'm sorry. I know it's been a long video, I'm sorry, but they're super, super squishy, they're really soft, and of course, you guys saw in the video, these things have real nice elasticity to them, and these things have really good buoyancy, guys, they do float, um, so if you guys want to use this as a top water, you guys can use it as a top water, just put a circle hook through the nose, if you guys saw in the video, just run a circle hook through here throw it on the water and it'll actually stay afloat on the water for you guys um, you guys can do a carolina rig the way he did it on the video uh, it's going to follow it's going to be following the weight around or if you want to do a direct uh, jig head right through through the nose right here this little area right here come out through there um, and then it's going to be going diving nose first so i'll, I'll try to do another video um I'll, showing you guys a little bit more how uh how you guys can can work it and of course i'm going to show you guys because um sometimes these lures get a little bent on them and it stays like that so the cool thing with the unfair lures is you can put that in hot water leave it there for a couple of minutes take it out put it on some chilled water and it'll actually strain out it'll actually strain out on its own so you guys don't have to really worry really worry about having to go and buy another packet of lures you guys can just go ahead and do that so i'll try to do another video for you guys as soon as i can um video content i'm going to be putting out there mainly is going to be you know dedicated to fishing but of course once in a while i'll put in maybe some videos of uh, me and my family were out and about or maybe do some, some hunting and whatever uh, so i'll make sure to post whatever videos i, I can for you guys uh, please subscribe please give me a thumbs up on these videos uh, I'm new to YouTube. I'm just trying to um, share with everyone, you know, some of the things that, that I love to do and, um, of course, want to do it on the budget. So you guys be blessed and fish on.